the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish Nation. My name is Amanda, and I'm a mother of two young children and an educator here in Vancouver. I am here today to speak on behalf of Parents for Palestine, a multiracial, interfaith, inclusive community of families on unceded Coast Salish territories, united by our commitment to supporting free Palestine. Together, we build child-friendly spaces, organize Palestinian-centered cultural and educational events, engage in solidarity work, and use our voices as parents to demand, to demand justice for Palestinian people. Equally shocked and horrified by what, has, by what has been happening and continues to happen in Palestine, Parents for Palestine continues to educate our community about Canada's complicity in this genocide by both refusing to enact a two-way arms embargo or even hold up its promise of ending arms transfers at all. We as parents refuse to stand idly by while our tax dollars are funding the abhorrent slaughter of innocent children in Palestine. So on May 31st, we exercised our charter, our charter right to peacefully assemble. children that have been killed since October in Palestine, only a fraction have been able to have a proper burial or be laid to rest by their families. To honor these martyrs, we laid out children's clothing paired with the names and ages of child martyrs of the genocide in Gaza. Altogether, we sorrowfully laid out 303 outfits with children's names, less than 2% of the total number of children who have been senselessly and viciously murdered by the Israeli occupation forces. It was heartbreaking for me as a mother to even behold these outfits laid out with care, many of which were worn by our own babies and children, and not think about the mothers in Gaza unable to be with their own. We did so not only to honor the innocent lives lost, but also to remind ourselves of our own, own humanity and ultimately why we needed to answer the global call to escalate for Gaza. Despite it remaining a peaceful assembly, we were met with by grotesque violence by the Vancouver Police Department. As members of Parents for Palestine began to disperse, we both witnessed and were subjected to a disproportionate level of violence used by the police. One pregnant um, community member, member was violently punched in the stomach by a BPD officer even after first being shoved and then identifying herself as being pregnant. I myself was also roughly shoved when trying to assist another person in getting out of the way. To make matters worse, there was no consistent messaging from the police, with some saying we only had to move off the tracks, while others continued to forcibly shove us back on the footpath and then into a parking lot. I personally wished, witnessed people punched, hit, kicked, pepper sprayed, shoved down, and police officers kneeling on protesters' necks the same violent maneuver that a police officer murdered George Floyd with in 2020. It was clear that this outrageously violent response by the police was indiscriminate at best. Since that day, I've talked to members of Parents for Palestine and community members who were assaulted, criminalized, and battered by the police. They have experienced shock and trauma. It, was, it is absolutely abhorrent that the BPD continues to brutalize people who are peacefully exercising their charter rights to assemble and express themselves freely in this way. Whether it be peaceful protesters standing up against genocide in Toronto, or our Wet'suwet'en neighbors peacefully defending their land, or our unhoused neighbors in the downtown east side, this is not the first time police in this country have violently assaulted peaceful protesters. There is ultimately no excuse for the deplorable violence carried out by the BPD when they violently attack peaceful demonstrators and observers, including a pregnant woman. At a time when Canada remains complicit in Israel's violent genocide that has killed over 15,000 children and over 36,000 people overall, it is no surprise that the state apparatus remains more focused on suppressing dissent from parents and other communities, peacefully protesting their tax dollars being used to slaughter parents and children in Gaza, than carrying out true justice by enacting a two-way arms embargo and imposing sanctions on Israel and supporting the investigation of the International Court of Justice. Thank <laughs> you.